I just kind of wanted to run you guys today through all the gear that I use as a professional ski photographer. Um, I have safety equipment, I have a laptop, I have all of the stuff that I need in order to be a traveling ski photographer. So let's run through my gear and see why I have so much stuff. Okay, so excuse me for the lack of presentation, but I was supposed to drive to a really epic spot to shoot this video. And then I got a flat tire. So we're doing it in my backyard. The first category of items that I want to talk about is safety items. Um, being in the backcountry a lot is inherently dangerous and people get hurt in all sorts of different ways. So I have a lot of stuff that prepares me for a lot of different situations. Um, some of the most basic of that being a ski helmet and goggles. So this protects me from head injuries as well as it also protects my eyes from some different... The snow is really bright so you don't want to get blinded. Um, and yeah, I mean a helmet is a really basic safety item that I think every skier should have at the very least. Um, a little more exciting, we have an ice axe. Um, this is a ice axe from camp, it's the Corsa Alpine. Um, it's a super lightweight ice axe and very minimalistic. Um, I'm not doing anything too crazy, so I don't need like a crazy like ice climbing axe or anything like that. I just want something that I can self rest with if I'm on a steep, skiing anything steep and extreme. So kind of working from the top of my backpack, I have two items in this very top back pocket. Um, this is a very easily accessible pocket. So I like to keep, I have a little mini satellite beacon. Um, I'm able to use satellite service to send an SOS signal or send a text message to people that I need to. Um, this is a super like, you hope you never need it, but you always should have it. Um, I recently got it actually this winter when a buddy ended up having to get heli evac out of a backcountry zone. And I was like, well, I guess I should get one of these now. Um, so I, I carry it around with me on everything I do now. Super light, super small, and not crazy expensive um, for the situations I can get you out of. And this is the Garmin InReach Mini. Uh, super, super big fan of how small it is and very compact. Um, a second item in this top pocket, I have this BCA radio attached to my backpack strap. Um, this is so that I can communicate with friends and people that I'm skiing with. Um, this is both a safety feature and like a ease of life feature. Um, if I'm trying to communicate to a skier that's coming down from the top of the mountain, instead of having to yell and do all sorts of weird stuff, I can just shoot them off of a radio, say, hey, I'm ready for you to drop whenever you are, and then they can respond to me. Um, and as well as if I were to get lost from the group or something like that, I can radio over the radio, say, where are you guys at? Can you make some noise? And use the radio to kind of get found again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of the radio, both for ease of, ease of life, as well as um, some of those safety features. Um, moving into this back pocket, I have some, I have my Beacon Shovel Probe. You've probably heard those in that order before. But I have a, I have this Black Diamond Shovel. Um, I got it probably like four seasons ago and it has been holding up really well. Uh, given I don't use shovel a ton, I build maybe like two jumps a year or something and then a couple, couple days of avalanche practice every year. So this shovel doesn't get a crazy amount of use but this has been the strongest um, form factor that I've seen on the market. Uh, a lot of the like cheaper, like like some of the blue shovels, uh, there's like some like cheap aluminum shovels. I've seen them break right here when digging through like ice and stuff. And that is a really big, like that scares me because when you get in an avalanche, it's gonna be really hard snow. So having a shovel that is gonna break in that situation doesn't make any sense to me. So I decided to not cheap out and I got a really good shovel. And it's lasted me three years, so it was definitely worth it. Because some of my buddies have had to buy a shovel every year because it keeps breaking. Next up, I got my probe. This is also black diamond, and it has also lasted me since I got the shovel. Um, I really like this design. I'm a little rusty, I haven't done this all summer, but you kind of pop it out, wiggle it around, whoop, and there you go. It auto locks for you and it's ready to use. When I'm in practice, I can pop that up even quicker, which is sweet. Um, big fan of this probe. I really haven't had any problems with it and it's very simple to use. 
And finally, a beacon uh, or an avalanche transceiver. There's a couple names for it, but this is another like must-have item for backcountry travel. Um, this allows you, if you get buried under the snow, assuming that your friends have one of these as well, they're able to locate you under the snow and hopefully rescue you, or vice versa. You're hopefully able to rescue your friends. If you want to learn more about beacons, I would highly recommend watching a video about them because if you don't have one, you should have one. Um, if you're if you're traveling in the backcountry on a resort, they're a little more. Uh, debatable. You don't necessarily need them on re in resort. So the beacon goes on me. The helmet usually is stored on my head or the back of my backpack. Uh, shovel and probe are stored in this back backpack for quick access. And then my radio and uh, in reach are stored in this top pocket. Now moving on to this pocket, which uh, this is where my back goes. So this stuff is sitting against my back. It takes a little longer to get to, but um, it's still very easy access. So first off, we got a headlamp. This is a super basic, this also black diamond. Apparently I have a lot of black diamond stuff. Um, but I've been a super big fan of this headlamp. I've had it for, I've also had this for like three or four years and it's held up. It has a little bit of a crack going on on the lens, but I haven't seen any problems with it. So yeah, big fan of this headlamp. Um, I, I, I don't really have any preference on headlamps, but I think it, just spending like a little bit of money on a headlamp can be very worth it at night. Um, instead of having to use your phone flashlight or whatever. Um, next up, I got a little tiny knife. Um, this is a really sharp, just like mini knife. Um, this is, I don't use this a lot, but um, there's certain situations where you might need a knife. So I like to keep it in there. Additionally, I have um, this little bundle of cord that I'm able to uh, do avalanche safety pits with. So basically you just are able to dig a little test pit and test how stable the snowpack is. That way that you can know if you're getting into some safe avalanche terrain that day, or maybe the avalanche terrain is a little more red flag that day and you might not want to be around it. So this little paracord, I'm able to test out my snowpack. Um, and lastly, I have this little tiny um, like emergency blanket. Um, it folds up really tiny and it's able to provide a lot of warmth when you need it. So if you have a pretty serious injury in the backcountry, uh, one of the biggest problems is being too cold and dying of hypothermia. So carrying this around with me, I find very worth it and takes up hardly any room. So I just throw it in there. Um, additionally, I usually carry a first aid kit. For some reason, it's not in here at the moment, but it's just a small like two person first aid kit for some basic uh, patch up tools. So nothing too crazy, but if uh, I'm able to do some basic first aid stuff. One last thing, I almost forgot about this. Um, I actually keep on my ski poles, I keep a Titan strap or a, vo a Viola Sole strap, Bole? I don't know the other name for them. I like Titan straps, big fan of them. They're just a like rubber stretchy strap and you're able to secure things. So one big example for skiing is if your bindings fail, you're able to Titan strap your boot onto your binding, which is a very temporary solution, but it does work to get you home. Um, which is the goal out there. So, yeah, Titan straps, big fan, keep them on the ski poles. Okay, shooting photos on resort. This is kind of my conglomerate of items, but I'll kind of show you how each one works and why it's necessary. Okay, so first off, we got the clothes. <laughs> so my go-to clothes are in resort on a normal ski day. Um, I have these bibs that I love. I got them two seasons ago and they're holding up really well. Um, these are the Flylo Baker bibs. So they're just a little like, a little flowy. Um, they have some really good vents. So if it's a hot day, you can vent. If it's a cold day, you close them up. Um, they also have lots of pockets, which are nice. So I usually keep my lens cap in here and my phone in here. Um, also, additionally, they almost no snow. I never get snow under my pants anymore because these just come up so high, like they're, they're coming all the way up. So, I mean, you really can't get powder anywhere into you with these pants, which is awesome. Um, additionally, they're very waterproof. So sitting down, laying down as a photographer, trying to get that angle, these work great. Next up, we got my base layer. Um, I wear this every day of skiing, no matter what I'm doing. Um, I have like three or four pairs. I actually believe that this exact specific one is out of order, which is very unfortunate because now my old ones are getting old and I wish I could get some new ones, but um, these are like an, I think it's just an REI branded, yeah, it's REI uh, just base layer. 
Um, what I really like about this one is it has this hood, which is awesome. Um, it also has thumb holes. So um, when you're wearing the sleeves, you're able to poke them through your thumb, which is really nice. Like when you're wearing gloves and make sure that no snow is getting into your, onto your skin, which is really nice. This is also just a nice material. And so I really appreciate this base layer. Next up, we got the heavy duty coat. Um, in resort, you're sitting down quite a bit because you're riding the lift. It's a lot more, um, you're just generally more cold in resort. So I wear this heavy duty coat. Uh, this is a marmot coat. It has a down and a uh, like wind and moisture wicking layer all built into one, which um, if I did it again, I would actually get them separately. But this is what I have. Really big fan of this. This also has vents. It has some armpit vents. Um, which is nice for when you're trying to stay warm. Uh, this hood is also removable, which is a cool feature. And it also has a powder um, elastic, so you can clip these around your waist and it will keep any powder from sneaking up in there, which comboed with the bibs, you're invincible. Additionally, for in resort, we got gloves. I actually wear these uh, they're trigger finger mittens is what I call them. Um, they're mittens, but you're able to move your pointer finger. So as a photographer, I'm still able to operate my camera at a somewhat limited level, but still able to, even with mittens on, which is really awesome. Uh, these are Hestra and they're leather, super nice. Um, definitely, definitely balled out a little bit on these ones, but my fingers have not gotten frostbite. So I think they're working. Um, and then additionally for my head, um, we got, I wear this uh, neck buff, which just keeps powder out of my neck and keeps my neck warm. And then I put my helmet on over the buff. So very comfortable setup, never complain. This is always my go-to for any day. Um, for the goggles, I got some TGR goggles. And for the helmet, I have a gyro helmet. Um, just a big fan of this whole setup, very comfortable. Uh, the goggles have magnetic lenses, which is a cool little party trick. They just pop right off and then pop right back in. I love them. Um, it's also nice for like when they fog up, it's easy to clean out these goggles because I can just pull the lens off, wipe it down, put it back on instead of trying to like scrub into your lenses and all sorts of stuff. Very good setup. Really enjoy this. Um, next up for in resort, we got my boots. Um, these are some Solomon Shift Pro 120s. Uh, that's a lot of numbers and letters. Basically, these are their touring all mountain boots. Um, they're kind of stiff, but they're a little looser than I would like. If I did it again, I would probably get some 130s uh, on the stiffness, but um, these work really good. I have not had any problems with these boots. They have walked on almost just as much dirt as they have snow, which is hilarious, but uh, these boots have held up really well. I really enjoy them. Okay, the skis. So my in resort skis um, are a pair of Black Crow Atris. Uh, I, these were my first pair of like real skis. I really have loved them. I don't know. They're just super fun to ski, super hard charging. And they're a little bit fatter. They're, uh, 108 under the waist, which is really good for, uh, powder, but they, I don't know how they did it, but Black Crow has made some incredible skis for even when skiing on ice. These things are so much fun, as much fun as ice can be. <laughs> uh, yeah, huge fan of these skis. Definitely love them. Um, and then the bindings. So I actually got some shift bindings because for a year or two, this was my one ski quiver. So I was using these for backcountry as well as resort. So I got some shift bindings. This was right when they came out. So I figured like these things look awesome. Um, not so awesome anymore. <laughs> uh, the touring mode doesn't really work in my shift bindings anymore. So that's why this is my downhill setup. Um, the shift bindings have worked really good for downhill for me though. So I'm not really complaining. I already have the bindings. I got my use out of them in the backcountry. I got a lot of days on these. So cannot complain too much, but um, it's also nice to have some like basic backcountry ability. Um, I can't really tour on like ice or anything too steep with these, but if I just want to do a little like side country, I can with these bindings, which is nice. So yeah, that's my in resort skis. Huge fan of the Black Crow Atris. Moving on to the ski poles. Um, these I got last season. Uh, these are some fulcrum ski poles. Uh, these are made for backcountry, but right now I only have a, one pair of poles, so I use them for both. They're very lightweight, and you'll also see they have these weird 
ribs going all the way down. So basically that's for when you're backcountry skiing, um, the snow is like never level. So you're able to grab at different levels. So I can grab this pole way down here if the snow's up there. I can grab this pole here if the snow's here. And you get a very nice grip on both poles. Whereas with normal poles, if you grab down here, your hand is like sliding and it's not really good grip. So these are made for backcountry, but I use them for in resort as well. And lastly, we have the backpack. Okay, this is my Low Pro Whistler 350. Um, it's a pretty big backpack, but I have a lot going on back there. So um, as you know from the safety talk, I kind of ran through all that stuff, but basically this pack is able to carry my ski gear safely and I'm confident that my cameras are gonna be safe on the mountain. So that is really important to me because I've put a lot of money into camera gear. Getting a really strong and secure backpack was very valuable to me. Basically, to give you the rundown, it has these back pockets, which I'm able to store my cameras. This is normally where my camera goes, as well as some other like small stuff. And then I have this top pocket where I have like my radio, and then I also put snacks and lunch. I have this back pocket where I put an extra coat and some skins and maybe some avalanche gear if I need it. So that's all my gear. I'm gonna put it on, and you can kind of see what it all looks like. So here we go. And so there we are. There's the full setup um, all put together. I really like how this all fits together and super comfortable on the ski resort. So I'm a huge fan of my inbounds uh, setup. Let's switch to my backcountry setup and see what changes. Okay, so backcountry gear, not a ton changes. Um, this is my base layer and my baker bibs. Those stay the same. Um, what I do is, since I'm going to be in the backcountry, being able to change my temperature quickly is very necessary. Uh, sometimes it's going to be really hot on the way up and that's going to get really cold on the way down and at the top. So I need equipment that is able to help me transition that to temperature. So the first thing that I use to do that is this wind layer. This is a North Face. Um, it's called their flight series. It is so light, incredibly light, and it holds off the wind and moisture really well. Um, so this is what I use quite often whenever it's windy or uh, a little bit of moisture in the air. I put this on and sometimes I ski down with it as well. Um, when I'm getting a little bit colder, what I'll switch into is this puffy jacket. Um, this is an REI puffy. As you can see, it's gotten some wear and tear. <laughs> Big old couple patches. Um, but this puffy is also super light. Um, it is extremely warm and this comboed with my green windproof coat is Equally warm as my blue puffy coat that I use in resort. So if not warmer actually I've I've worn these combos in some really cold temperatures um, Yeah, I mean that is my that is all I need to change for warmth. Actually, that's not all I change one other thing I do um, Depending on the temperature of the day. I might switch out of these mittens and into some light gloves um, these are based gloves. I just got them last season and they're really good for like touring. These are not very waterproof, but they're really good for like lightweight. Uh, just like if you just need a little extra warmth on your hands. And then other than that, my gear doesn't really change. Um, I might wear this hat instead of a helmet on the way up, but that's about it. <laughs> so on to skis, uh, the poles stay the same, but I have a separate pair of skis for backcountry. Um, these are the Liberty Origin 96s. Uh, big fan of these skis as well. They're a little bit skinnier and a little bit lighter. Um, additionally, I have some pin bindings on them. Now, some people are scared of pin bindings. I have not had a single problem with these pair of pins before. Um, these are the G3 Ions, um, and I got their 12 din. So I'm able to really crank these things down if I need to. I ride them at like a normal, like... I believe I ride them at a nine, so a very normal range for to be riding any sort of binding. Uh, the reason I chose these bindings specifically, uh, for one, I actually really like how the orange matches these skis. So that was a little bit of a consideration, but um, mostly I've seen people ski on these bindings extremely hard. It's harder than I'm ever gonna ski on them. So I have a lot of faith in these bindings and I have skied some crazy stuff and in some no fall zones. They've definitely held up on ice and powder and whatever you can think of. Huge fan of these bindings. So that's the skis. Um, one other thing that goes with the skis is I have a pair of ski skins. So these are also G3. 
Um, they're, they're universal skins. They are super bomber. I love these skins so much. I've had them for two or three years and I've tried some other skins and these have always been my favorite. I've always gone back to this exact pair for all my skis. <laughs> Um, this little weird plastic thing on the front, I'm not the biggest fan of, so if you can find the generation before that, I might go for that, but these things, the glue is crazy. You can see that these things have seen some pine needles, these things have seen trees, they've seen all sorts of stuff, and they are sticking like their day one. Um, additionally, I do a lot of bushwhacking, like an ungodly amount of bushwhacking, and I have a couple scratches, like, some tree branches have ripped these skins, tore them right here. And this tear has stayed the same size for the entire duration for the last like year or two. And I haven't seen any downgrade in performance because of all the brutal things I've done to these skins. So I'm a huge fan of these G3 Universal skins. Definitely recommend checking them out. Okay, and then additionally, lastly, for backcountry, I make sure that I put my beacon and shovel and probe on and in my backpack for any backcountry adventures. So that's pretty much all that changes for backcountry. Um, now let's move into my camera gear, what camera I use and why I picked it. And finally the camera gear. So you've seen the backpack, but um, basically I keep all my camera gear in these pockets. Um, here, I'll open this up so you can see a little bit better. Um, this coat I keep in here so that it's a little extra padding so that I can really be confident in chucking my backpack off a cliff if I really need to. I'm not gonna be able to show the true layout because I'm using my camera to record this right now. Um, but basically my DSLR, I have a Nikon Z6. Um, that is a mirrorless camera and I have been so in love with the camera. Extremely good battery life, good SD cards, good everything, good cold performance and all the things that I've been looking for, this camera has held up through all of my torture. Um, huge fan of the Nikon series, uh, which is a very uh, controversial topic, but I love it. Um, so that, my Nikon Z6 usually goes in this pocket, which is my, that's my dedicated camera pocket. Um, as well as uh, my 24 to 70 lens. I have a 24 to 70 2.8, which is my most used lens probably. Um, so I usually keep that lens on the body and it goes in this pocket. But right now, I have my drone in this pocket. Um, I just got this drone this summer, so I have not tried out ski photography with it, but I got a DJI Air 2S. Um, a really like, it's kind of the middle line. Uh, it's not too small, but not too big. Not too, also not too expensive. <laughs> um, big fan of the drone so far, but I'm not really sure how I'm gonna fit in the pack yet. So we'll have to see this coming winter. <laughs> Um, so where this drone is going right now is usually where my camera goes. And then in this big pocket over here, I have my big boy lens, uh, 70 to 200, 2.8. This is a bomber lens. This is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used. And I'm so glad I put the money into this. Um, for ski photography, I love being able to punch in this much. And sometimes you need to be able to. I've gotten some of my best shots with this lens. So I'm a huge fan and I would highly recommend any ski photographers getting a 7200. Let's do a little interception here. Um, this is what my camera setup looks like at the moment. Boom, right there. So there is the camera. Um, this is an Nikon Z6, and it is recording everything I'm doing right now. This is my tripod. I really love this tripod. It's this brand Sirui, and I really love it. I also got this fluid head so that I can do a little bit of video and it has been a really good setup for me. So for the mic as well, on the topic of photo and video, um, I got this Rode mic. It is a Rode Wireless Go. Um, I also have one on my chest right here. Um, big fan of the mics, they're wireless as you can see, and they work really well. Okay, last thing on the topic of camera gear. Um, I have this Peak Design clip. Um, this clips onto my shoulder strap and my camera is able to slide into it. So I have this little base plate on my camera that slides right into this and it locks in and then I twist this little button and it's not coming out. I would ski down anything with my camera in this clip. It is super bomber and I've never had a problem with it. I mean, I climb trees with it. We are indeed in a tree. <laughs> Probably 10 to 12 feet off the ground right now. And it is all thanks to this peak design clip. I do all sorts of stuff, it's crazy. This is a very tough system and I love it. Okay, transitioning into more of the 
computer work side of photography, which is honestly where I spend more time than not. We got my laptop bag. So I do all of my camera work in a coffee shop when I'm on the road. All winter, I'm generally on the road. And so I need a very mobile setup where I can do my work at a coffee shop in Colorado and then a coffee shop in Washington. So my setup has to be able to move with me. Um, so I use a Dell XPS laptop, um, super bomber laptop. I have not had any problems with the laptop and I love how it works. It's probably two years old at this point and it's held up really well. Additionally, I use a Logitech mouse. The only reason I bring this up is because I got these two extra buttons on the side as well as my scroll wheel is able to do some advanced features. And this has saved me a ton of time in the editing room. So if you're looking for a new mouse, I highly recommend looking into some of Logitech's mice. Um, and then I also have a hard drive in here. So I'm able to plug it in my computer. I would recommend you getting an SSD, but I got a, I got a hard drive because I didn't really know the difference when I started. And that's what I have. Um, I just plugged that into my laptop and I have my whole Lightroom catalog stored on there. So it's able to save a lot of space on my laptop and I'm able to work on my Lightroom stuff on other computers as well. So yeah, that's my mobile camera workflow. So I've been in the ski photography industry for a couple years now and I'm slowly climbing up the ladder. Um, uh, this year it looks like we're almost doubling the profits from last season, which last season just barely got me by. So I'm pretty stoked on this season of winter adventuring. So I hope that I'm able to inspire you guys to pursue this journey if that's what you're interested in. Um, and I hope that this channel is able to provide a way that you guys can learn how to do everything. So if you have questions, please let me know. And uh, my next video, I'm gonna talk about some of the apps that I used as a backcountry ski photographer. Um, there's a couple ones that are super helpful. And if you wanna check it out, click up here.